Thank you for joining the Bethel LA Virtual Worship Experience. Bethel LA is a church located in South Los Angeles, community with the community at heart. We minister to the social, physical, and developmental needs to our community through preaching the gospel and providing food and clothing distribution, housing for the homeless, benefits outreach to our veterans, intervention and prevention to gang members, re-entering resources to the formal incarcerated and mental health services. We take seriously Jesus' example in Luke 4, chapter 18, to preach the gospel to the poor and deliverance to the captive, to heal the brokenhearted, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. More information is available at our website at www.bethelamela.com. We can only do this with your financial gifts. You can support our ministry by visiting our website and clicking on our Donate Now button. We are now accepting giving by text with our phone number 323-310-5800 or through our affiliate giveify.com or by mailing your support to Bethel AME Church, 7900 South Western Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Good morning, every head bowed and every eye closed as we go to the throne of grace and prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to say thank you, God, for another opportunity. Father God, just to lift up your son's mighty matchless name of Jesus, but God, also to make our request known before you. Father God, if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough just to say thank you, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for putting a roof over our head. Thank you for putting food on our table. Thank you for putting clothes on our back. Thank you for keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger. God, we just can't say thank you enough for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Father God, we ask for a special blessing for Bethel AME Church right now, God, for every member, God, for every officer. We ask that you would touch them right where they are, God, that you would go into their houses, into their rooms, God, and be with them and be with their families, God, and just be a hedge of protection around them right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that you would bless our pastor, God, and, bl and bless the first lady, God. Continue to wrap your arms of protection around them. Continue to shower your grace and your mercy upon them and continue to keep them in the narrow path of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we want you to go out into the world, into the community right now, God, and allow your anointing to fall fresh right now, God, and allow your Holy Spirit to have its way right now, God, and just touch those that are dealing with depression and dealing with suicide and just, God, dealing with loss and that are grieving right now. Father God, we want you to just put your hands on them right now, God. Allow them to feel your presence. God, allow them to feel your grace and your mercy just covering them. Father God, touch those who are sick, God. Touch those who are out in the streets homeless right now. Touch those who are dealing with financial insecurity right now, God. Touch our new leadership that's governing our world right now, Father God. Be with them, God. And God, we'll be so careful, God, to give you praise, God. We'll be so careful, God, to give you honor. But God, we want to make sure that we give you all of the glory. And it's in your son's Jesus' name that we ask all these things and the people of God said amen, amen, amen. Bless the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. African-American heritage, John Lewis, born outside of Troy, Alabama on February the 21st, 1940, John Lewis grew up in an era of racial segregation. Inspired by Martin Luther King Jr., he joined the Civil Rights Movement. He was a freedom rider in 1961. In 1963, he became chairman of the Students' Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. That same year, as one of the big six leaders in the Civil Rights Movement, he helped 
planned the march on Washington, D.C. He was the youngest speaker to bring attention to the struggle of the African-American vote in the South Lewis and Jose Williams led a march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, which became known as Bloody Sunday. This sped up the passage of 1965 Voting Rights Act. In 1981, he won a seat on Atlanta City Council. And in 1986, he was elected to the House of Representatives, representing Georgia's 5th District. John Lewis was honored with numerous awards, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom, NAACP Spingram Medal, and the Soul John F. Kennedy Profiles in Courage Award for Lifetime Achievement. He died from health issues July the 17th, 2020. May he rest in peace. These moments of black history have been brought to you by our church school. You don't have to worry And don't you be afraid Joy comes in the morning Trouble they don't last always there's a friend in Jesus, Pastor Calloway, who wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. Tell yourself. I know that I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands Listen to this When your test and trials They seem to get you down all your friends, all your friends and loved ones, they're nowhere to be found. But there's a friend, there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart, if your heart is broken, your hands and say, oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. Bethel family, no matter what, no matter what may come my way, my life is in your
only found out what part of his story that was the call, the first civil rights movement in America in 1787. Richard Allen and his followers walked out of the St. George Methodist Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, after having been pulled from that meeting during all the time. They came in protest of being relegated to the balcony and the back of the church and praying at a designated time after a white for Christmas prayer. It was those words of Richard Allen and his followers when being pulled up from their knees. If you let us finish our prayers, we will trouble you no more. That gave rock to our church. It was out of this movement that the free African society was started. It was started to promote self, health, and mutual aid among members of the African American community. It was the foundation of the free African society and the desire to worship under their own vine and fig tree that gave birth to the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Noted African American historian Dr. Carter G. Woodson, in his classic work entitled The Negro Church in America, called the African Methodist Episcopal Church the greatest institution in the African American community by and large because of its organization. As the first denomination of the people of color in America, the AME Church has been understood in various ways. The Church, however, has understood itself as a liberating and a reconciling The Church is in the business of liberation because it came out of a history and tradition of liberation. Luke chapter 4, 18 and following as Jesus embarked on his prophetic Galilean ministry in the synagogue in the Nazareth, it says that they gave him to read the scroll from Messiah 61, 1 and 2. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the captive free. After Jesus finished reading the passage from Isaiah, verse 21 of Luke says that he tells them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus' ministry of liberation to the oppressed, the poor, the imprisoned, and the blind is the ministry to which the enemy church understand it has been called. Ministry of liberation is not however void of reconciliation. Reconciliation is the ultimate mission of God. That's what the Apostle Paul tells these believers at Corinth in his second letter to them that God was in Christ, reconciling the world back to himself. Not only that, but Paul says that God has given him the ministry of reconciliation. But the world does this reconciliation occur? That was the question of these first century believers in the Corinth. In the first part of verse 18, Paul tells them that they were reconciled to God by Jesus Christ. All things, he said, are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Their enmity towards and estrangement from God was now replaced with peace and fellowship with God. Hallelujah. The restoration of the divine human relationship, according to Paul, was initiated by God. God wanted to be in relationship with him. The good news, the good news is that God wants to be in relationship with us. God 
God initiated our restoration and our reconciliation to Him by Jesus Christ. That enmity for God had rightly called the divine enmity for them. But God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their transgressions against them. Don't know about you, but I love those words. But God, yeah, every Christian ought to have a but God testimony. I, I was somewhere I should not have been. But God, I, I was between a rock and a hard place. But God, I couldn't see my way. But God, I, I had given up on him or I had given up on her, but God, the doctors had done all that they knew to do, but God, I was on my way to a bird in hell, too mean to live, and wasn't fit to die, but God, every Christian ought to have a but God testimony. But God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto God's self, not imputing our trespasses against us. They were not reconciled from reconciliation's sake. No, no. They were reconciled to God for kingdom's sake. But in the latter part of verse 19, Paul says, that God gave them the word of reconciliation. In the latter part of verse 18, Paul says that God gave them the ministry of reconciliation. God gave them the responsibility to continue the work of reconciliation that God initiated. The word and Witness that we proclaim ought to be a word of reconciliation for those who are estranged. The word and the witness that we share ought to be a word of renewal for those who have no hope. The word and witness that we share ought to be a word of revitalization for those who are downtrodden. The word and the witness that we share ought to be a word of restoration for those who are broken. The word and witness that we share ought to be a word of redemption for those who are lost. The word and witness that we share ought to be a word of resurrection for those who have been down so long that they don't even feel like getting up. Hallelujah. God has given us the word and witness of the ministry of reconciliation. We are, Paul says in verse 20, ambassadors of reconciliation for Christ. And wherever we are, there he is. Watching a movie some time ago about American citizens who were living abroad in a foreign country. The violence and civil unrest broke out in that country. I remember the American citizens trying frantically to get to the United States Embassy through the streets and through the rioters and through the bombing and the throwing of rocks and through all that was trying to go on. They, they were trying to make it to the embassy. The violence and the civil unrest was all around them and all around the embassy. It never spilled over into the embassy. The embassy was the place where the ambassador of the United States resided. Hallelujah. I mean, the ambassador of the United States to that country, the property, even being on foreign soil, was considered to be American soil because the ambassador was there. Whenever the ambassador was there, America was. 
that, that's what Paul told these believers and concluded in this chapter. That the ambassadors of reconciliation for Christ, wherever they were, there Jesus would be. Hallelujah. Uh, they, they were not in this ministry of reconciliation by themselves. No, no. Wherever they were, there Jesus would be. As they were, so are we today. We, we are not in this ministry by ourselves. I came by the day to tell you that as ambassadors of the Christ, He is with us. He walks with us. He talks with us. He tells us that we are His own and the joy that we share and He carries there no other than ever. No. We have found ourselves in a season of pandemic. Over 450 million persons in America alone that have died from this disease. Many are wondering where is God. Why, why would God allow such a devastating plague to come upon our country and our world? Where is God and does God care anything about us? Pastor, where is God? Reverend, where is God? If He's so good, why is He allowing this evil and this hatred to run rapid in our country? As I prayed and contemplated and looked for the hand of God in the midst of all that was going on, I've been able to say, God is in the front line worker who, who are putting their life on the line to provide care to those who are in the hospital. God is in the nurses in the COVID unit when, when the capacity of the hospitals are filled and, and they have to put patients in the hall to see after them. God is in the attendance. God is right there with the respiratory therapist. God is there with the doctor. God is right there with all of those who would wait on their every day. Where is God? Well, he's in the convalescent home. And he's moving up and down. And he's in the administrators. And he's in the doctors. And, and he's in the nurses. And, and he's in the therapists. And, and he's in all of those who are providing care, even to those who would find themselves in need. He's in the chapel, in the hospital, in the convalescent home, in the assisted living facilities who are providing the telephysics and care and comfort that families cannot physically be kept. You are never in this ministry alone. I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roll. I've felt sin break of death. Fine, it's all for my soul. In the midst of it all, I heard a voice telling me still to fight on. For he promised never to leave. Never to leave me alone. In this ministry of reconciliation, God promised. Never to leave us alone. For he will then promise, reconcile, 
word unto himself. We bless you and we praise you. We love you and we glorify you. We magnify you and we lift you up. We give you all glory and honor and praise for this word. We thank you for this witness. We thank you for this ministry of liberation and this ministry of reconciliation. For over 200 years in this country, we thank you and we pray your blessing and anointing upon the African Methodist Episcopal Church. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, God bless you, welcome to the body of Christ. We want to get you hooked up and tied up and tangled up with a believing community of uh, people of like mind and believers with like faith and like profession who are serious about the word and witness of reconciliation right where we are. Give us a call here at Bethel Los Angeles 323 750 3240. 323-750-3240. And until next week, the same time, the same place, Lord bless you, Lord. Keep you, the Lord. Make your face to shine as a part of you and give you peace. Church thing.
you for being a part of the Bethel A&E Worship Experience. There are several opportunities you can express your support through our given ministry by clicking on the Donate Now button on the Bethel A&E website, www.bethelamela.com. Reverend Dr. Kelvin T. Calloway and the Bethel family wants to thank you for loving, worshiping, and serving with us. 7900 Western Avenue, Los Angeles, California. Phone number 323-750-3240. Email office at BethelAMELA.com. Thank you for joining Bethel.